Hi everybody, my name is Lance Porter. Uh, if you've been on my website, LearnToPaintPortraits.com, you may have noticed a photograph of a couple of my students working at a kind of an easel that you have never seen before. Well, the reason for that is that it is my own invention, which I proudly call the Porter 1000. And this is it. This is a Porter 1000 right here. In this video, I want to explain it to you, tell you why I like it and why I use it in my workshops and why my students like it very much as well, and also how to make one of your own. So what it is, is not an easel, but it's a painting table. And I kind of had a drafting table in mind when I was working on this. And the need it fills is the need to have something to rest your hand on when your canvas is entirely painted but still wet. What do you do in that case if you want to make some fine corrections to the eye or some other detail in your portrait? Well, you can't rest your hand on the canvas because you'd come away with a handful of wet oil paint. And a conventional easel, you're just out of luck. They do make a thing called a mall stick that you're supposed to rest across the top of your easel somehow. I've tried them and I'm here to tell you it's just a joke. A mall stick does not work. Steady your hand? You gotta be kidding. So I tried to come up with something that would allow you to really truly steady your hand when you're making those fine corrections late in the process of painting your portrait and really steady it to a dead moral certainty and my answer is the Porter 1000. As you can see it is simply a two foot by two foot piece of plywood. That's what the table surface is made out of. And down both sides, it has a piece of two by two, a stick like this. You can get them at any lumber yard. And there's another piece of two by two across the bottom. The purpose of the piece across the bottom is just to keep your portrait from sliding off the table. Now, in addition to that, I've taken an inch and a half wide strip of coarse, like 60 grit sandpaper and glued it to both the side rails. So the way you use this device is to take a crossbar like this, which is simply a piece of uh, about 28 inches long, two by two, and you can lay it across your portrait at any point, and it gives you something that you can rest the entire weight of your body on if you want. They're that strong. And you can make those fine detail adjustments with your brush without worrying about getting your hand or even your sleeve in the paint because it holds you up at exactly the right distance from the canvas. A canvas is typically a half to three quarters of an inch thick, but these rails are about an inch to an inch and three quarters inch thick. Even though they call them two by twos, they're really not that big if you measure them. And then this puts you up another two inches above that, roughly speaking. So you can move this thing anywhere from the top to the bottom. You can hold it diagonally across like that. And you can get in there and make the finest little corrections, retouching, that you want to do without getting in the paint, without making a mess, and by keeping your hand just as steady as you like. And again, these things are as sturdy as can be. You cannot hurt them. They'll last forever. And you can rest your whole body weight on them if you want to. So you can't buy one in the store. It's something I came up with. I've made six of them so I can provide one to everyone who participates in one of my workshops. And uh, you can make one of your own, and you're welcome to. You have my permission. So what does it consist of? Let me show you. There's not a lot to it. As I said to start with, it's basically one piece of 3 8 inch plywood, two feet by two feet, or 24 inches by 24 inches. I get, got this one, I get my plywood at Lowe's, and I'm not trying to make a pitch for Lowe's lumber yards here, but they happen to sell pre-cut two feet by two feet pieces of plywood, which is a tremendous convenience, and it, at least it is to me. You're starting with a perfectly square two by two, you're halfway home if you get it pre-cut at Lowe's like that. Then you're going to need to buy a couple of pieces of 2x2, two 2, 8 feet long. One piece of 2x2 um, two two is not quite enough to give you all three rails plus your crossbar. So unfortunately you're going to have to get two pieces of 8 foot 2x2. Two two. And then you're going to have to get one piece 
of 2 by 4 and again, unfortunately, they don't sell anything less anywhere I've ever seen than an 8-foot piece. You only need a little less than 2 feet, and that's what makes the foot, uh, or the leg, if you will, of the painting table and just props it up at the back a little bit. So I glue and screw this onto the back of the board about four and a half inches down and that seems to work really well. And then you need to cut yourself two side rails which should be about 23 inches long is plenty. See I don't go all the way to the top, you don't really need to. And then your bottom rail is about 20 inches and again I screw all those on from the back. Couldn't be easier. I actually glue them and screw them, but that's overkill. You could probably get away with either gluing them on with Gorilla Glue or any kind of wood glue you like to use, or screwing them on. It's just a very, very easy thing to make. And it winds up just as sturdy as it can be and just as handy as it can be. Now, the only drawback I've seen from my own use, and I've used this a lot, of the Porter 1000 is that it prompts the table surface up towards you a little bit, like, like a drafting table. But it doesn't prop it up an awful lot. And when I'm painting over a long period of time, I'm an old man. Sometimes I get a crick in my neck. And so it crossed my mind one day that I would like my Porter 1000 to stand up just a little bit higher. Um, so I made the Porter 2000. And this is the Porter 2000. And you can see that it stands up quite a bit higher and really uh, is, is more comfortable to work with in my opinion. The one drawback to the Porter 2000 versus the Porter 1000 is that your crossbar will not stick in place on the 2000. On the 1000 it, it will. That's the purpose for the sandpaper. On the 1000 you can put your crossbar in there and let it go and it won't go anywhere. To keep it in place on the 2000, you have to constantly have a little bit of pressure on it. Not a big deal, really not an inconvenience at all, but um, that, is, that is one difference. So how do you get from a 1000 to a 2000? Well, the only difference is I've added 16 inch 2x4 legs. So let me turn it sideways, you can see what I'm talking about. This is the Porter 1000, this is the foot of the Porter 2 1000 that's made out of a 2x4. So all I've done is I've cut two pieces of 2 by 4 16 inches long and I've screwed them in this way and then this way and then this way and it's rock solid it's not going anywhere it's a sturdy little piece of furniture so cost of making one of these things uh, I figured about twelve dollars tools you need a handsaw an electric drill a drill bit and a couple of strips of sandpaper Incidentally, if you wanted to, instead of gluing sandpaper to these sides for the purpose of friction to hold your crossbar in place, you could use the kind of non-stick tape that uh, people use on their skateboard. If you have a kit around the house, you may already have a supply of that, and that would work fine. So that's a Porter 1000 and a Porter 2000. I think you'll find them just really a convenient thing to work with, much cheaper than a store-bought easel much sturdier and steadier than all but the very best easels that you can buy at an art store. And it gives you that advantage of being able to lay the crossbar across any way you want, steady your hand, put the heel of your hand on the crossbar, put your forearm on the crossbar, however you prefer to work, and you can work away with a steady hand with no danger at all of dipping your sleeve or the heel of your hand or anything else in the wet paint on your canvas. Thanks for watching my video. If you haven't been to my website yet, I invite you to come visit at learntopaintportraits.com. I also have a few other videos all about painting portraits in oil on canvas on YouTube. Feel free to check them out. Thanks.